In this tutorial, I want to show you guys how to rotate and project a 3D object onto a Pygame window. In the first section of this video, I'm going to be explaining the math behind rotation and projection. And then in the second section, I'll be going over how the code works. So let's get right into it. So in this section, I want to cover the math that you need to understand to uh, understand how projection and rotation work. So first, I'll be going over the basics of matrices and how to multiply them. So a matrix is essentially just a 2D array uh, where there's a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns. So in this case, we have three rows and two columns. And this is the naming convention sort of for matrices. You're going to call it by the number of rows by its number of columns. And then let's say we want to multiply this by this matrix, which is a two by one. Again, two rows and one column. So if we want to multiply these two together, we have to make sure that these two values are equal. Otherwise, we can't. And we'll see why in a second. And the resulting matrix is going to be of this size. So 3 by 1. The number of rows from the first matrix and the number of columns from the second. So the answer is going to be something like this, where we have 3 rows and 1 column. So how do we actually get these values? So what we do is look at the first column of the second matrix. And in this case, we only have one column, so this is pretty easy. And we flip it over, and we can represent it like this to make it um, more intuitive. So now we're going to multiply this column by each row of the first matrix. So how do you multiply these two together? What you do is multiply each element and then add them. So this first row is going to be 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2. And then for the second, it's going to be 1 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Plus 2 times 4. The last one, 1 times 5. Plus 2 times 6. And that's just our answer. So we're going to get 5, 11, and 17. So as you can see, it's a uh, it's pretty simple, especially when you only have when you're working with uh, smaller matrices. So what do you what does this have to do with projection? So let's say we have our cube in 3D. So in 3D we have the three axes, so x, y, and z. And I'm gonna attempt to draw a nice cube, which probably won't look that good, but trying our best for all right that's good enough so as you can see each point so we have eight points eight corners uh, each point has an x y and z value but in our pi game window right in our application we only have x and y x and y axes so how do we go from this to this. Well, we basically want to just push the cube down, right? Like squish it onto the xy plane. So how do we do that? We want to get just a 2D coordinate x and y. So for this, we need to use ma matrix multiplication. And we're going to use this matrix called the projection matrix. This is just called the projection matrix. And you'll see how it works in a second. So what you do is you take uh, 3D point, XYZ point, and kind of represent it as a matrix. And you multiply it with the projection matrix. Then the result is going to be a 2D point. So how does this work? Again, like we just went over, we're going to take the first column and multiply each row. And I think you noticed by now, um, we're basically just multiplying by ones and zeros, so we can ignore uh, the multiplication operations for these two. And so this first part is just going to be x, second row is just going to be y, and since there's only zeros in this row, it's always going to be zero for the last row. So now we have a 2D coordinate, x and y. So we've successfully converted a 3D point into a 2D point. 
So if you run this operation on all of these coordinates, then we can represent the cube in 2D. But without rotation, it's just gonna look like this because these these points are gonna be like on top of each other, right? So we need to rotate the cube in three dimensions and then project onto 2D so we can see something like what we saw in the introduction, like that. So how does rotation work? It's basically the same thing. Um, I'm just gonna call this the rotation matrix. There's a uh, rotation matrix for the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Um, I don't really know them off the top of my head, but it's a three by three, like the projector matrix. And you can multiply an x, y, z coordinate by it, and you'll get another 3D point, but rotated. So let's say we want to multiply, or excuse me, we want to rotate this cube by a certain number of degrees. Then we're, we're going to have a bunch of like sine and cosines in here in this matrix. So we plug in the angle, we multiply the matrix together, and we get some some rotated version of this 3D coordinate. And then if we do that to every single coordinate, then we'll have a rotated cube, which we can project onto the XY plane again and onto our window. So this might be a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna go over the code now and hopefully it makes more sense. So now let's start with the code. The first thing we wanna do is set up our Pygame window. So pygame.display set mode so this method takes in a tuple which contains the size of our window so we're going to make it 800 by 800 and we're going to create our main loop which is an infinite loop which continuously updates our display or our window so right now if i run this we just have an 800 by 800 window which is blank because we haven't put anything in the main loop to add anything to our window and it's just updating the window constantly. And right now it's doing that as fast as possible. So this window might be refreshing at some ridiculously high speed. So, okay, so this is gonna crash. So we wanna limit the amount of times the display is updating per second. And we can do this by creating a clock. And if we put clock.tick60, this means that this window is gonna be updating 60 times a second which is more than enough for our purposes. I'll stop that. And so if you noticed earlier, the program crashed because we're trying to close out the window, but we can't. And so we aren't able to interact with this window because our main loop isn't checking for any events. So we need to check for events like the, like the user trying to exit out the window. So for that, we'd go event.type. So if event.type is pygame.quit, so if the user tries to exit the window, then we want to run this method, so pygame.quit. So now if we run it, we can actually close the window because the main loop is checking for that. And so now we're finished with the basic pygame window setup. I know it's pretty quick, but I didn't want to spend too much time on the pygame stuff. I wanted to focus on the 3D projection stuff, so now we can start working on that. So now let's try and project a 3D cube onto this window that we just created. So to visualize it a little bit better, I graphed the cube points, these eight points in this uh, 3D plotter online. And we want to project this 3D cube onto 2D, like this. And so as you can see, there's only the X and Y axis. And we're only going to see four points because the cube, the cube isn't rotated so that the points are overlapping each other, like this. So this is our goal for now. And so we want to set up a list of coordinates, three coordinates. So n for n in range eight. This just creates a, a list of size eight for our eight points. Zero is negative one, negative one and one. So I know this is kind of weird, but we want to make sure that the coordinates are represented in three by one matrices, not one by three. And each list represents a row. So it has to be in this format. And then we're going to fill in the other seven points. So now we have all the points from here. And we also want to import our projection matrix. And as we saw in the previous section, it has 
uh, three rows and three columns. And so next we want to project these points into 2D. So we need a uh, multiply matrix method. And I want to warn you guys a little bit about this because this is a very slow way of, uh, or a very inefficient way of implementing uh, matrix multiplication in Python. It's much quicker and, or it's much easier and efficient if you use a library such as NumPy for matrix multiplication. But for this project, I wanted to make it from scratch. So I implemented this very inefficient uh, algorithm, which is triple for loop. And it has horrible time complexity, but uh, it's okay for this project. And so if you want more or better performance, I'd recommend you check out NumPy and set up all matrices using NumPy. And so you can use their matrix multiplication method. And so as we saw in the previous section, um, to multiply two matrices, you have to make sure that the uh, sizes are compatible. So this is what this is doing. This is creating the product matrix and we already know the size of the product matrix based on the dimensions of the input matrix matrices. And then this uh, iterates through the rows, rows of each column of the second matrix and as well as the rows of the first matrix. And it fills in the product matrix like this. And it returns the product matrix. And so what we can do now is try and uh, draw a point on our window for every for every point for every projected point from our cube so for point and cube points we can do point 2d so the projected version or oh uh, yeah we can just call it point 2d equals multiply m projection matrix first and point next. So this is this point 2D is going to give us a 3 by 1 matrix, but the first two elements are the only uh, relevant ones, right? Because it's only going to be X and Y. So again, since it's a list of lists, so we have to access the, uh, the zeroth element of that list. So that's why we have two zeros here and then this is the y and the first element of that one and so at this x and y we want to draw a circle on the window so we need to pass in the window that we're drawing on we need to pass in a color so i'm just going to pass in red this is like the rgb value for red uh, we need to pass in the position x y and we need to pass in a size for the circle so let's see what happens now we're going to get this. The red dot is in the origin of the Pygame window. So the origin is top left. So this is 0, 0. And as you go to the right, the x increases. As you go down, the y increases. And so why is it like this? Why is it in the corner? It's because we're graphing points like 1, 1, 1, negative 1. And the position is in pixels. So it's barely, it's basically on the origin. So we need to multiply this, these coordinates by some sort of some sort of constant so that we get a larger uh, view of the cube. So we can define scale as 100 and print that. And so as you can see, it gets larger, but since we have negative uh, coordinates, some of the coordinates are gonna be out of the window, like around here. And so the only one that's showing is the positive one, the one, one, or 100, 100 now that we multiplied it by a scale. And so along with the scale, we need an offset so that we can move this entire cube to the middle of the screen. So what we can do is just add 400. And the way I got 400 is half of our screen width. So you can actually make this a constant. So window size is 800 like that. Then you can just do window size divided by two like this, and this works as well. And so now we get the projected cube in the middle of our screen. However, uh, as you can see, there's only four points because again, they're overlapped. And so we need to go back to the 3D cube 
and rotate the coordinates, then project it to see uh, to see the other four points. And so now let's look at the rotation matrices. So if you just search up rotation matrix on Wikipedia, you'll see um, these are the rotation matrices that we're going to be dealing with, the X, Y, and Z. And we can actually implement these in our code. So we're going to put it in our main loop. <coughs> and as you can see, we haven't defined the angles yet. So angle X equals angle Y equals angle Z, and they're all zero by default. And it doesn't recognize the sine and cosine function. So we will import uh, from math import all. And so that works. And so if we run this, it's not going to do anything because we're not doing anything with the rotation matrices yet. So what we want to do is before we project our 3D point to 2D and drawing the, the point, we want to multiply it by the rotation matrices. So rotate X. So this is just a temporary array to store our result. Uh, multiply M rotation X by the point. So it doesn't really matter what order you do this in, but you just want to do this for all, all three uh, rotation matrices. So rotate X, so we're just going to pass it in there. This is going to become rotate Y. Then finally, this is going to become rotate Z. So now if we run this, it doesn't make a difference because our angles are still static. They're not moving. And so let's, for instance, we can just do something like this. And then because this is in our main loop, so 60 times a second, this angle X is going to be incremented by 0 0.1. And this will affect the values inside this rotation X matrix, which will affect the, the points in our 3D point, and it will affect our projection. So let's run it. And so as you can see, this is kind of a, a pie game issue that we're running into. So the points are moving, but they're kind of overlapping and overriding each other. And so what we have to do is window.fill, then a color, so fill it with black. And now we can see the, uh, the cube kind of rotating, or the cube points rotating on the x-axis. So what this does is fill the entire window with a certain color. And why we need this is because we want to clear the points on every loop, because they're, the points are going to be updating. So this is just going to clear the entire screen, sort of, and fill it with black. And so we can see the new points uh, and see them moving, kind of. And so we can just kind of play around with this. Uh, we can go do something like this, angle Y and Z as well. So you, as you can see, they're rotating like crazy. And this doesn't look quite right because we haven't connected the points yet. And so this is what we're going to do next. So to connect each point, we want to keep track of the position of each point that we're plotting on our window. So 0 for in range, length of cube points. So this is just going to be a blink or a list full of zeros. And because we have eight, eight points in the cube, it's going to be eight zeros. And so what we're going to do here in this loop, we're going to keep track of the i, so which which point we're on in the cube points, and then put the position, the x, y projected position of that point into our points list. And so now we have, we have basically a list containing the position of each uh, point. And the position includes the scale and the offset as well, so that's important. Then we're going to define a connect point, ij, and the points list. And so what the ij are doing is they're giving us the position, or they're giving us information on which points that we want to connect. So in the pygame.draw.line, 
We're going to need the window that we're going to draw in, the color. So to find, this is going to be white. And we need a starting position and an ending position of the line. The starting position is going to be the position of the ith point in points array. So points i, 0, and points i, 1. So this is the x, y position of the ith point that is projected. And we can do the same thing for the ending position, but put the j here. And we're basically just accessing the points, right? The list of points that we have uh, of projected points. So now in here, we want to connect the points, actually. So let's say 0, 1, and then we pass in the points list. So let's see what happens now. So as you can see, or it's kind of distracting that it's spinning so much. So you can just do angle. <sighs> OK, I just need to make it slower. So 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So as you can see, these two points are connected. And these two points are points 0 and 1. And so we need to do this for all of them. So it's going to be what uh, 12. 12 lines and I'm sure there's a good way to automate this like with the for loop but I'm just going to go ahead and kind of brute force it so if you connect all these points then you'll get a finished cube like this and so now we've successfully projected a 3D object onto the Pygame window using projection and rotation and so we can actually see the entire cube and so in our introduction, I was showcasing the final product and I was able to kind of control the rotation of the x, y, and z axis. So this is what we're going to do next. So now the final step for this project is adding um, keyboard inputs and adjusting our angles based on our keyboard input. So we're going to put this in the main loop and check for keys that are being pressed. So we can do this with the get pressed method and then this will give you a dictionary of keys that are being pressed so we can now uh, check if keys are being pressed pygame dot let's say uh, we want to check the a key so we go k a then if k a is being pressed then maybe we increment the y by a certain amount so we can make a constant here so that we can uh, change it later so rotate speed equals, let's say, 0 0.02. And just copy and paste this. So maybe the D key can do the opposite. So decrement angle Y by the rotate speed. Mm -hmm. And so we can actually do this for each of the uh, axes. So angle X and angle Z can be controlled by W, S, and Q, and E. And of course, we can add a reset. So game dot k r let's say angle y equals angle x equals angle z which equals zero so that resets all the angles to zero and we want to remove the uh, the auto increments as well here so now we can run this and if I tap my d key it's gonna rotate on the y axis if I tap my s key it's going to rotate on the X. If I use Q and E, it's going to rotate on Z. And R resets. So this concludes this tutorial on projecting 3D objects in a Pygame window. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for more tutorials. I'll see you guys in the next video.